In this video, I want to introduce you to the topic of financial statement analysis. So financial statement analysis is very important when making several key business decisions. For example, if you are thinking of lending money to a company and you're trying to decide whether that company is a good credit risk or not, you want to know, am I going to get my interest payments and am I going to get the principal repaid to me? Or maybe you are a supplier to a company and you want to know, hey, should I ship them inventory on credit? Why would you be worried? Well, what if they never pay you? What if you never get the cash? Okay, so suppliers are concerned about this information. Lenders, maybe you're thinking of investing in a company. You're thinking of buying stock in a company like Walmart or Google. So you want to look at the past performance of that company, which is given in their financial statements, to try and make predictions about the future going forward. What will be the company's future sales? What will be their future profits? Okay. Now, why is financial statement analysis so critical in making these decisions? Because, let's take me for example. So I'm an investor. I don't work at Walmart, however. I don't know what's going on at Walmart. I can't just talk to the CEO and be like, hey, let's have a sit down. I'd like to know about the financial performance because I'm thinking of buying some more stock in Walmart. I don't know what's going on. I'm not an insider at that company. So Walmart, being a publicly traded company in the United States, they are required to put out financial statements. They have to be audited by an external auditor. And then investors like me can look at those financials and have an idea of how the company has performed in the past. Now, that's no guarantee about how it's going to perform in the future, but I can make judgments based on, oh, sales have been increasing or sales have been declining, and I think this trend will continue or reverse and so forth. Okay? I don't work at Google. So if I'm thinking of lending money to Google, if I'm thinking, of investing in Google, I don't know about Google's actual performance. I can't sit down with the CEO and be like, let's talk about what's going to happen next quarter. I don't know what's going on because I'm not an insider at Google. So these financial statements are like a window into a company and they give me a picture of what is going on at this company and what can I expect to happen with respect to profits, sales, cash flows, in the future. And so with financial statement analysis, when we talk about that, when you hear that term, we're really thinking about the three main financial statements. And we're going to focus a lot on these in the videos to come. Think about the income statement, which is sometimes called the statement of operations, or just the P&L statement, stands for profit and loss. Okay, So the income statement, we've got the balance sheet, which has the company's assets, liabilities, and equity accounts. Okay, uh, Per IFRS, so International Financial Reporting Standards, that is called the statement of financial position. So the statement of financial position, the balance sheet are the same thing. Okay. And then we've got the company's statement of cash flows, which is going to tell us where is this company getting its cash from? Is it from their operations, from business operations, or maybe it's financing? Maybe they're borrowing cash. That's where a company needs cash. Otherwise, it can't be in business. How would they pay their employees? How would they pay their utilities and so forth? So we're going to focus a lot of time on these financial statements and really understanding them so we can make predictions about the future. So I want to just give you an idea of what financial statement analysis, kind of where we're going, the types of things we can do. At the most basic level, okay, at the most basic level of financial statement analysis, you could just look at a company's financials. And here I've got financials for Walmart, Okay, the most recent uh, you know, annual financials at the time I made this video. So you can look and just say, okay, are sales growing? Okay. And so Walmart actually has two types of operating revenue here. We've got net sales, which is just selling inventory. Then you see this membership and other income. That's because Walmart also owns Sam's Club, and Sam's Club sells memberships. But let's not focus too much on the details right now. Let's just look at the total revenue, and these amounts are in millions. So we see that 2019, 2020, 2021, for the year, fiscal year ended January 31st each year, we see that the top-line revenue... For Walmart, okay, so that increased. It went from 514 billion to 523 billion to 559 billion. So we see an upward trend. Okay, so revenues are increasing. So we can see that from looking at their income statement. Okay, this is a basic love. Just looking at just top line revenue, what's going on. We can see whether they're profitable. Yes, they are. Okay, we can uh, now we look and we can also see the profit decline and we can ask why. Now that's a more advanced level trying to figure out well why exactly did the profit go down and we'll get into that. Now we can also look at do they have any debt? Now we're not going to see that on the income statement. We're going to see that on the balance sheet aka the statement of financial position. 
And then we can use the statement of cash flows to say, well, where are they getting the cash from? Is it their operations? Are they borrowing money? Are they selling fixed assets? What's happening? How are they getting the cash? Now, that's when I say basic level, I mean, all you do is look at the income statement. You look at the balance sheet. You want to know how much debt they have. It'll say current debt, long-term debt, and so forth. So that's a basic level of analysis. But we go a little more intermediate, a little more deeper, we could start to compute some ratios. And we're going to talk a lot about ratio analysis uh, with respect to financial statement analysis. Very important tool uh, for analyzing financial statements. For example, how long does it take Walmart to sell their inventory? How many days? Okay, so we can calculate something called inventory turnover, and then we can convert that to something called days to sell inventory. So uh, I'm not going to speculate here on how many days because I haven't calculated for Walmart, but let's just say that there was a retailer in general, uh, some retailer that it took them 73 days to sell their inventory historically, and then it went to one year, it was 79, and then the next year it was 88. And you say, wait, wait a minute, uh, this is not a good trend. Why is it taking that company longer and longer to sell your inventory? So then you would have questions about that company like what what is going on are customers maybe not as excited about this company's product anymore what what's happening you can look at uh, so, so again that would be the days to sell inventory which is calculated from inventory turnover which is a ratio another ratio you can calculate is profit margin okay so profit margin we'll talk about profit margin is for every hundred dollars or hundred euros in sales how much of that actually turns into profit because okay, remember, sales are very different from profit. You might have $100 or 100 euros in sales, but only $2 or 2 euros in profit. And so then you would have a 2% profit margin. Okay, So this, when I say intermediate level analysis, we're not just looking at the numbers on the financial statements. We're now calculating these ratios to try and extract more meaning from the, the financial statements. Thinking about, uh, we could express the company's R&D, research and development costs, as a percentage of the company's sales. And then we can look at, well, how does that compare to what the competitors are spending? Maybe they spend 3%, okay? They spend 3% of their, of their sales on uh, research and development. Maybe all the co competitors are spending 6 or 7%. We say, well, why isn't this company spending as much? Or maybe they're spending more than their competitors and so forth. And we can look at the trend over time. There's lots of layers that, that we can deal with here. Now, getting more advanced, okay, ratcheting up in terms of what can we do a financial statement analysis, we can look, so one of the ratios that I didn't mention, we think about ROA, return on assets, or ROE, you might have heard of these. Okay, so ROI, uh, R, excuse me, ROA, let's focus on just the company's net income, right, their bottom line profit divided by their average assets. So if we take ROA and we say, okay, maybe ROA is increasing, and we say, well, why is it increasing? Well, we can actually decompose ROA into two components. We can decompose it into something called asset turnover and profit margin. So asset turnover times profit margin is equal to ROA. And we could dig into that and say, okay, well, did ROA increase because profit margin increased or because asset turnover increased or maybe both of them increased? Maybe one went down, one went up, whatever. We can also decompose ROE. Okay, We can disaggregate it into its component parts and see, well, what is really driving increases in return on equity or return on assets? So that's DuPont analysis, and we will talk about that. Now, in understanding why net income increased or decreased, you might think, well, if you know, a company's uh, net income went up, it must be that they sold more product. Well, maybe uh, not, not necessarily the case, right? Maybe sales were flat. Okay, maybe sales were flat, but expenses went down. So then it comes down to, okay, well, what expense was it? It Was it an expense that the company had some control over? Like, oh, maybe it was cost of goods sold and the company got better at bargaining for like better prices from their suppliers. And you say, oh, good job. You know, the company did a good job. But what if it was something like tax expense? And it was like, oh, well, there was a new law. Uh, you know, it, it, think about like in the United States, for example, when the Tax Cut and Jobs Act come out, it decreased the corporate tax rate. So a lot of companies, their tax expense declined. So the profitability goes up. And you say like, oh, well, if the company's profitability goes up and I show you that, well, 90% of that was due to just a decrease in tax expense, which the company really didn't have any control over, it doesn't seem as impressive because it's more external events affected the company's profit and not an improvement in the company's business operations. That's that's why it's this advanced level. We, I will show you how to take it apart bit by bit and what are all the various components that affected a company's net income. Why did the net income go up or down? What were the you know seven, eight, nine different things that happened? Okay, now, we really want to dig deep when we talk about advanced level, thinking about manipulation. 
can't we trust the numbers in the financial statements? Remember that management has a lot of opportunity. There's estimates that they make. When we think about like depreciation, what will be the useful life of property, plan, equipment. There's uh, accounting choice of which different methods they can use. And then there's just, you know, companies doing things like aggressive revenue recognition. where they are engaging in channel stuffing and things like that to artificially inflate the company's sales. So remember that the company knows that you're going to be looking at these financial statements and making judgments about the company based on the information in those financial statements so they have an incentive to make the financial statements look better sometimes than what they actually the business operations happen to be and so i'm going to show you some ways when we get into advanced level analysis talking about what kind of manipulation might you expect what are some warning signs what are some things you might look at to you know see what what is going on here we will think about what is the quality of the earnings number that the company is putting out if they say oh well we have had you know ten billion dollars of, of net income well to what extent can we trust that number so we're going to do a lot of things i'm going to show you how to make common size uh, income statements we'll make trend statements i'll show you dupont analysis we'll calculate a ton of ratios and i'll show you cause of change why did net income go up why did it go down how do we break that down we're going to do a ton of cool things with financial statement analysis in the videos to come